Hello everyone. Let's start with an example of something which can be considered as the flagship example of contour integral. So we have a contour, which is a circle of radius r. Now, usually, what we do is that a contour needs to be parametrized, and the easiest way to parametrize a circle is by considering the angle it makes with the reference line specifically with the x-axis in this case the real z-axis and this serves as a good choice of parameter equally good or equivalent choice of parameter would be the arc length of the circle along its circumference right so for example you start measuring the length with respect to the real z-axis and as it goes around it measures the length and when it traverses the whole circle once it traverses a length of twice i r equivalently when it traverses the circle once the parameter when considered to be the angle traverses an angle of twice pi and as you know from the relation s equals r theta we know that these two parameters where theta is the angle it makes with the x-axis and s is the distance specifically the arc length from the real z-axis these two parameters are proportional to each other and they're equivalent in this case, we take theta to be our parameter. So, if we parameterize this circle, we write the variable set along the circle to be expressed with r times e to the power i theta, where theta starts from 0 and theta ends at twice pi. When this is the case, we can find out dz, which turns out to be r times e to the power i theta, and then there is an extra i because of the differentiation rule times d theta. If we substitute that into this integral, which we call to be i, then we find i equals the integral now that the variable is going to be changed to the parameter theta, the limits of the integral needs to be changed accordingly. In the specific case, this is given to be the limit. So you integrate from zero radian to twice pi radian. When you substitute z to the power n, you find r to the power n, e to the power i in theta, and then you substitute for z, there you find r times e to the power i theta times i times d theta. Once we simplify this, we'll find the integral to be i times r to the power n plus 1, and then the integral from 0 to twice pi e to the power i times n plus 1 theta d theta. Now this is a simple integration of the exponential function and we know what it turns out to be. It turns out that i times r to the power n plus 1 and then from the integral we find e to the power i n plus 1 1 theta over i times n plus 1. This is especially valid when n is not equal to negative 1, and when in fact n is equal to negative 1. It turns out that this integral here is just 1, because e to the power 0 is 1. So in that case, we have i times r to the power n plus 1 
then all the integration of the deep is a which gives us theta with limits from 0 to the choice pi. So we have two distinct results. The first one is when n is not equal to negative 1, and the second one is when n is in fact equal to negative 1. In the first case, we find out that this result is 0 because e to the power twice pi is the same as e to the power 0 and nothing else changes. So, therefore, this is going to be 0. In fact, to be more specific, e to the power 0 equals e to the power twice pi i above 1. On the other hand, we find when n is equal to negative 1, this is going to be i times r to the power n plus 1 times points pi. And, ladies and gentlemen, these are the results. In a special case, when integrated over the unit circle, in that case, r is equal to 1. So if r is equal to 1, that means when integrated over the unit circle, well, when the contour is the unit circle, then the answer is going to be twice pi i. So we can conclude that the closed loop integral, where the loop is the unit circle of z to the power n dz, has two answers. So when n is equal to negative 1, then the answer is twice pi i. And when the answer is anything, any other integer other than negative 1, we have the answer 0. So this is a fantastic result. Before finishing this, I just want to mention the fact that this can be understood by the help of Cauchy's residue theorem that claims that for a meromorphic function, that means a function which have finite number of singularities, so if f of z has finite number of singularities, finite singularities, then what happens is that you can expand the function in terms of a Lorentz series. A Lorentz series is somewhat like a tennis series, but it can have negative powers. So for example, I can say if you have a singularity, now, but of course, that you're trying to expand the function, then the function can have z to the power negative integer. But for example, it can have a minus 5, z to the power minus 5, plus a minus 4, z to the power minus 4, all the way to a minus 1, z to the power minus 1, plus a0, plus a1, z plus a to z squared and so on plus dot 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 and this number here is called the residue and if there are singularities within the region you are integrating or within the contour you are integrating then the residues of the function what becomes the most important factor in determining the result of the integration only in case of z to the power negative 1, you have a Lorentz series with a residue, and in other cases, the Lorentz series does not have a residue. So therefore, it has answer holding when n is equal to negative 1. I hope this is clear now, and thank you very much for listening.